Hey everybody, Ben here from The Beard Guys. Today I'm bringing you 15 tips and tricks that you didn't know about Power World on a PC and console, including how you can stop your food ever going off without using a cooler, how to make powers easier to catch, and how you can move whilst massively over your carry weight. If you find out anything you didn't know before in this video, then drop a like and a comment down below to help us out, and let me know if you have any other amazing tips for Power World that you think other people might be missing out on. So one of the annoying things you're going to keep coming up against in Power World is when you lose a POW on your team. You can see, for example, my poor little level one Fox Parks here is dead as a dodo. And what you have to do once they've been killed is put them back into your POW box and then they get this 10 minute timer where you have to sit and wait for them to get back up to health and you can use them again. But what you can actually do in order to speed this up is just to assign them into a worker slot in your base. We'll just get rid of the cow for a minute and then that's just going to dump them unceremoniously onto the floor in your base. And one of your pals is going to come along, there we go, and chuck them on the bed. And they're actually going to start to recover immediately once you're on the bed. And all you can do then, go back into the pal box, find the pal that you just assigned to your little working team, and grab them out. You can put them straight back in. And you can see that's now a pal we can just use immediately again. Does have slightly low health, but that will recover over time. And if they have some kind of injury as well, which they often have, then that will heal over time or when you sleep as well. So a nice little trick if you don't want to sit there and wait 10 minutes, if you're flying or something you really want to use just got killed then you can quickly do that get it back out and you can crack on a really useful pal that I slept on for quite a long time is the Gale Claw. Here's the Gale Claw. And you can get a set of Gale Claw gloves when you hit level 23. And what these do is basically they mean you don't have to have the Gale out in the open like this. You can just have it in your party. But as long as the Gale Claw is in your party, then when you jump and press jump again, so A and then A, you'll actually use the Gale Claw to glide instead of a glider if you've crafted one. And these are really useful because they move a lot faster than a normal glider would if I speed this up for a minute you can see how far we're going to go and I'll just show you with a normal glider in a sec as well so we managed to sort of land down here and now we'll go and give that a go with a normal glider so we're back up here and we've ditched the gale claw so we've just got our glider now we'll hop out and have a go where we're we going over here you can see it moves much more slowly we're not going to get anywhere near as far our stamina is already down to nearly half as well so you can see massive difference in the distance we're able to travel using the gale claw versus the glider and there's another trick you can also use to get a bit more distance when you're using it and that's by using the grapple basically you can use your grapple to give you extra momentum for when you start your gliding and then you'll go really really fast and you can go a lot further to do this you need to fire your grapple usually at the edge of something i find it a bit easier on an edge like this and then as soon as you fire it and you're in the air flying along you need to press b to cancel and then a again to jump whilst you're in the air and once you get the knack of it and get the timing right it'll send you flying through the air with tons of speed and you'll be able to cover huge amounts of ground. Like I said, this works with the glider and with the gale claw, but if you do it with the gale claw, then it's going to take you even further than the glider will. And as well as being useful for travel, gliders and even more so the gale claw is also really good for dodging enemy attacks, particularly boss fights, because the gale claw moves you around so quickly over short distances. It works even better than dodging in most situations, so it can be a really handy pal to have on you when you're trying to boss fight. Another fun little trick you can do to get around in the world is when you throw a pal sphere at something to capture it, if you jump up on top of it, you can actually mantle them like that, stand on top of the pal sphere, and when it captures them, it will fly you miles up in the air, and then you can pull your glider and glide off to wherever you need to be. Look, there we go. We've just found a lift monk effigy by bouncing off the top of that poor little lamb. So there's different pals in the game that have necklaces you can craft for them. For instance, low level, you have Daydream. A bit higher up, you have Floppy. And if you actually craft these necklaces and equip them to your character and then add these pals to your team, you'll have them following you around even if you don't currently have them deployed. You can see in my team here, I've got two daydreams and the floppy as well as my gale claw and beacon and i can have my beacon out with me here and these pals will stay with you and help you fight enemies as well so they'll attack your enemies and give support with whatever their powers might be but they can't actually be killed by the enemies only the main pet that you have out can actually be targeted by the enemies they can get pretty annoying when you're trying to build things and you have all these little things flying around in your face. They get pretty close up. It's a shame you can't tell them to be a little bit further away, but they are pretty handy when you're having a big scrap and you don't need multiple pals with you to take that fight on. 
There's a few really important things to know about food in this game. One of them is that one of the items you should craft as early as you can once you have some ancient technology points is going to be the feed bag. The small feed bag does just fine for most things, to be honest. You get ancient technology points, by the way, by defeating bosses. And once you unlock this small feed bag and have it in your inventory, it means you can place food in a slot down here. You can see I've got a load of baked berries. And what this basically does is whenever your character or any of your pals get hungry, they'll automatically eat from this food bag so I haven't had to manually feed any of my pals for absolutely ages they just gradually eat through these berries and you don't need to do anything else to manage food with them so really really easy and it just takes away a little bit of admin that you would normally have to do in the game something worth adding on the topic of baked berries as you can see when I've got this highlighted here it says nutrition 21 and san 1 your pals all have sanity meters you can see on the top right they're all pretty much in good condition if we go into here and highlight some and you can see on the right here San 100, 198, 81 sort of varies quite a lot but your pals basically get sanity back by sleeping by relaxing in the hot spring and by eating food or taking certain medicines and what I think a lot of people do and what I was doing for a while initially was just feeding them normal raw berries those are baked berries in here but you get loads and loads of berries from your berry farm and you can feed them berries but they give them nutrition but no sanity at all and so if you notice your pals constantly getting upset and angry and injured and all these things in your base it's probably because you're feeding them just berries. So a really easy way to help with that a little bit is by doing baked berries. You just need a cooking pot and you cook them in there. It's super, super easy. It doesn't give them a ton of sanity, but it does give them a little bit and it will help certainly early on in the game. Another easy recipe you can do is this jam filled bun, which weirdly has a description and a picture of some jam on some bread, but a jam filled bun, which gives them 51 nutrition and six sanity. And is also pretty easy to craft. You just need flour and red berries for that. So once you've got the wheat farm unlocked, you can make flour and then with berries, you can make jam filled bum. Something worth noting about the food box while we're here, by the way, is that they eat in it from left to right for some inexplicable reason. So this jam filled bun is on the left. That'll get eaten first. If I switch these berries over here, so there's 998 there. There we go. Someone came over and ate. They've gone down to 997. If we put the jam filled bun back over there, then whoever comes over next is going to eat our last jam filled bun and get a nice little sanity boost. And then we're on to the baked berries. The reason we've got all of these slots full of different stacks of baked berries is because if we leave these open, then your pals just come and dump a load of random rubbish in there. They'll just bring over anything, wheat and tomatoes and stuff that, that you don't really want your pals to eat. It's not very effective. So it's worth filling up these slots to stop them doing that. I've just got tons of baked berries. So I split the stacks out uh, and they'll last there for ages. Even with the spoil timers, 200 berries will last for absolutely ages there. If you are worried about the spoil timer on something, by the way, a great little trick that you can do that will probably be fixed at some point is you see this Lambo mutton I've got here. If I click in the right stick to sort my inventory, you see that's currently on eight and a half minutes. Click in that suddenly the timer has gone back to 10 minutes. If I click in the stick again, it's gone back to 10 minutes. If we take some of these berries, you can see they've eaten the jam on toast there. If I take a stack of these berries, it's on 14 and a half minutes there. Click to sort it. That has gone back to 15. So every time you sort the inventory, it resets the spoil timer of any food that you have sorted. So a pretty crazy little bug, but useful if you've got something you want to keep resetting manually. It's a bit of a faff, but it could be useful in some situations. Another great little kind of glitch but handy little thing is that you can actually use your death bag to store food indefinitely. So when you die with your character, you'll drop a death bag. And if you don't pick everything up from it, you leave something in it, then it will just stay there indefinitely. And if you put food items into this, you can see that they've all actually got a max timer here. If I bring this meat over, that's just going to freeze it on 916. If I click to sort, it's going to reset all those timers back up to their maximum value. And they're just going to sit there and never change. This thing's been here on 20 minutes for absolutely ages. I've got loads of stuff stored in here and the timers on that will never go down. So great little hack if you're a bit fed up with trying to get the cooler to work because it's a bit temperamental and your pals never actually go and use it properly. I don't know how long this will be in the game, but it does work really well at the moment. But if they do patch it, they might make it so your death box suddenly disappears. So I'd be a little bit cautious about storing absolutely everything back in there. But it's a bit of fun you can use whilst we're in early access. Having a death bag 
flag in your base is also kind of cool as well because you get this giant blue pillar of light and it's a nice little indicator of where your base is when you're out and about nearby. So there's a couple of quick ways you can mine ore in this game using POWs and these are particularly useful if you're playing on Xbox, don't have a dedicated server. I don't really tend to set up my POWs to actually automatically mine ore whilst I'm not there or whilst I'm not the base. I actually do it manually and there's a couple of good ways to do that. The best way for super low level is at level 6 you can get the saddle for the rush ore and this is the pig type thing, the wild boar. If we deploy one of these, the saddle lets you hop on their back and they get the reckless charge attack. And if you do this attack three or four times, I think it is, on an ore node, they'll actually smash it completely. It is a bit annoying because if you sort of don't line it up properly, they run a bit past it. But you can smash an ore node completely pretty quickly with this. If you get them sort of stuck in nicely, then they don't go too far past it. And there you go. You can see we've completely smashed that node. Of all, we got 75 there. It would be 60. I think we actually hit the side of the one there and got a little bit extra. And it only takes you about 30 seconds or so to actually smash an ore node using this. So that's one nice way you can farm ore when you're very low level. Another trick you can do when you're a little bit higher level is the dig toys headband. Once you get this and get yourself a dig toys, which you can find over in the desert here, you can see that yellow area in the middle or right up in the top right as well. And you get those around level 19, 20 should be pretty achievable. And if you deploy one of these and then hold down X, you can see at the bottom to do the drill crusher special ability, they'll just sit there and spin around and do absolutely tons of damage to the ore nodes and they'll smash through a full node in about 20 25 seconds and then they're normally pretty good at moving on and doing the next one as well if there's one pretty nearby so we go and grab this big old pile of ore there you see there's 45 because we took 15 of that with the other guy earlier on but if we just go up to one of these full nodes here chuck him back down get the ability activated you can see doing 29 28 30 damage per hit on this ore node and smashing through it super super fast. You can see here they've automatically gone on started hitting the next node as well. So something useful to know, especially if you're out mining or like that and picking up big heavy piles of things is how you can move around whilst you are fully over encumbered. So if say for whatever reason I wanted to move something out of this box that was really heavy, we've got 6,000 wood. If we wanted to move that somewhere, we could take that. Obviously we're now 19,000 over our carry weight, but I have my grapple equipped and grapple by the way, you can find on the right hand side the ancient technology list we've got the grappling gun there and we can actually fire and use this whilst we're fully encumbered if we fire it into the ground a little bit of range there then we can fly around and move wherever we want as long as we do it in 10 second intervals while we wait for the grapple gun to recharge and you can even fast travel while you're doing this so if we go over next to our power box here we could fast travel up to this base here the mining base and we've got all of this wood with us and then we could just grapple over next to this box and chuck 6,000, 7,000 wood into this box here. So really handy little thing. I find it especially useful when I'm just coming out here, clearing all of these ore nodes using the dig toys, and then I can go around, pick up all of the ore and just grapple around, grapple back to this box, grapple over to the power box, and then just fast travel back to the main base and dump everything where I need it. Something useful to know for when you first start on a new world is that there's a lot of spawn points you can basically fast travel to by just forcing a respawn. If you go into your options and go to respawn and select yes, then when you select respawn, you get given all of these different preset options of places you can actually spawn at even if you don't have a fast travel spot. You can see it even actually hides your fast travel spots. It only shows your base locations here. What you can do when you first start the game is you could go around and go to each of these spawn points, spawn here, and then just run around and and get a nearby fast travel point. A lot of them have them right there. You can see there's one right on this one that we actually don't already have. And now we've got a fast travel point we can use here. And if we want, we can just go and respawn again and do the same thing on all of those different spawn locations that it gives you. When you need to repair all of your items, you can do that, of course, at the repair bench. And you can select each individual item by hovering over it and pressing A on Xbox and then pressing the start button. It tells you exactly what you need to repair it on the right hand side there. But what you can also do is at the bottom of the screen, it says you can press Y and actually do repair all. And that's going to bring up everything you have that needs repairing and show you all of the different stuff it takes to repair that. This can be really useful, but I'd be pretty careful with it a bit later on in the game because it'll try to repair everything. And sometimes it'll try and repair stuff. You can see my stun button there is barely damaged at all. My flame arrow is barely damaged. But it'll actually still use resources to repair these. And some stuff that uses things like ancient civilization parts or organs or palladium, whatever you might not 
not want to use and it can be a bit wasteful because it'll automatically repair stuff that is not really very damaged at all so careful when you're using that it can be a bit wasteful of resources it depends what you want to repair it might end up being better off just repairing a couple of your more damaged things automatically or if you've got tons of resources then maybe repair all is absolutely fine a useful thing to know about pals and their abilities and their damage is that pals do 20 percent extra damage when they're using skills that match their element type so you can see here my beacon is electric and has three different electric skills assigned so these are all going to do 20 percent bonus damage because they match the element type there again for this ragnarok it's a fire type so we've got a fire one here and actually an empty slot here so we've put this one in that's going to be fire as well and they're going to do bonus damage because they match the element type of that pet so a nice little tip to know you don't always have to use the same element type from that pal it might be useful to have a different one to counter another element but it is a useful way of getting extra damage from your pals so something worth knowing is that status effects on enemy pals will make them easier to capture so you can see this dinosaur here has a one percent capture rate we'll just do a little bit of damage to it to make that bit of a bigger number so you can see we're on five percent with the basic sphere if we grab a mega we're on 27 and if we're able to stun them with the stun baton just whack it enough till we get that effect so you can see we're now on 40 percent whilst it has that stun active and if we wait for this to disappear you should see that capture rate percent actually drop down there you go it's gone to 28 percent now that that stun effect has worn off and you can actually stack these abilities as well i just had to come back because we died because we stood there getting hit constantly we'll just check what we got on this 81 percent already on this just get a normal sphere out so you can maybe see a little bit better we got 41 percent capture rate on this die how if we're able to stun them we're going to see that go up there we go got them stunned 72 percent and then if we're able to set it on fire at the same time then the flame effect will actually give us another boost to it there you go 86 percent it's a little bit hard to tell exactly exactly because obviously the flame is doing damage at the same time but you can keep stacking these flame poison electric or shock and all of these are things are going to make it easier to capture pals so this can be really useful when you're trying to capture something particularly difficult if you can try to stun it and then maybe if you have a pal with you as well like beacon or something that's going to do an electric effect or something that's going to do a poison or fire effect stack all these things up fire poison stun and then try and capture them and you're going to get a big boost to that you also get a boost if you try and capture them from behind as well so if you can try and do all three of those and get behind them then you're going to have a really good chance of capturing some pretty difficult things something useful to know if you want to get some more ancient civilization parts they're pretty useful for lots of things in the game and you get them by killing bosses or capturing bosses and you can farm most of the bosses they respawn within an hour or so cave bosses or world bosses you can get more parts from doing that but also ones that you've captured that you don't particularly need as well as getting ancient civilization parts when you capture them you can actually then kill them and get more parts again so if we grab a boss that we've got like this chill it here and chuck them in a slot one that we don't really want and then get my meat cleaver which you can unlock in the technology tree and equip that and then we chuck them out and if i click in the right stick and then select butcher you're actually going to get materials back from killing them you can see here it's drops and stuff on the floor we got six ancient sieve parts precious pelt and leather so a really good way to farm those if you want if you do a lot of caves runs and you have a bunch of these bosses or alphas sitting in your inventory and you don't really use them then you can just kill them and you'll get some nice loot for that you can also do the same thing with any normal pals as well and you'll get the same loot generally that you got also for capturing them in the first place so a nice way to get some extra stuff from any pal you have now that's 15 tips there's one little bonus tip i want to chuck in which everyone should know but i can't do a video without mentioning it because it's so ridiculously useful if we can tell one person who didn't know it then it will be a win and that is quick stacking if you go up to a container like this a lot of people are sitting there tapping y to move things in manual i've got these horns tap y i've got this wall tap y move it across you don't need to do that if you look in the bottom right it says you can tap rb to quick stack if i tap that it's going to put everything in there automatically that matches a stack that's already in there. So it's removed a bunch of stuff from my inventory, chucked it straight in there. If I go up to another container that has stuff in it, like this one probably has some bits in it, tap RB. It's going to chuck that in there without me doing anything. Go up to this food one that has some honey in it, tap RB, chucks the honey in there. Just a really, really handy way of just going around your containers and stacking stuff. And especially a game with such big stack sizes and with crafting that is wireless, so you don't need to keep taking stuff out of chests in order to craft. It's a really nice way to just run around 
down and quickly tap a button on each chest and you're going to put stuff into it like accidentally putting 20,000 gold into this barrel. So that's everything for today. Hopefully you found out something new in there. If you did, then help us out by dropping a like and subbing to the channel. And why not check out one of my other Power World tips and tricks videos. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Ben. We are the Beard Guys and I'll see you next time.